Where did she go? Well, she isn't always here, correct? True. As you know, he is an assassin with multiple confirmed kills. He is currently serving a sentence at Fuchu Prison. He was imprisoned six years ago. That's what Pewter told us. After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. Pewter claims that there were two culprits behind the original serial killings. One was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. But Rohan committed suicide last year. That leaves one culprit still alive, number 89. But number 89 couldn't possibly have committed these crimes. He was in jail when each of the murders occurred. Correct. However, I do not believe it is accurate to claim that he had nothing to do with the incident. I know who killed Shogun Adami. If he was telling the truth, his involvement is possible. Unknown. You don't know? No such person is listed in the family registry. It is possible he is a foreigner, but his nationality is unknown. However, I believe it is safe to say that he was born and raised in Japan. Unknown. I cannot determine if they have any connection. Approximately one month ago, Hitomi Sagan witnessed Shoko in Fuchu Prison's waiting room. I am unable to say for certain that the person she was there to visit was number 89. After all, Fuchu Prison houses 2,000 inmates. But number 89 knew Shoko's name. I know who killed Shoko Nadami. That must mean that he knew her somehow. It is possible. Let's talk to number 89. All right. However, we need not go to him. We can bring him to us. If we plan on sinking with him, it would be more efficient. Can you arrange that? I can. Sorry to interrupt your busy day, but I need you to tell me something. I'd appreciate your cooperation. Thank you. 
number 89. Your real name. I don't remember. Yeah, I guess I do. About a month ago, Shoko visited Fuchu Prison. Was she there to see you? That's right. What did you talk about? Nothing special. You're in no position to lie. I'm not lying. She didn't come to hear me talk. Then why did she come? To meet me. Meet you? She probably just wanted to see me. Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is a republic in West Africa. Population 17 million. I don't have time for your jokes. A long time ago. I don't remember exactly when. What's your relationship to her? A physical one. I'm kidding. She was just a business partner. That's right. I was one of the culprits behind the case six years ago. One of the two Cyclops killers. All right. Let's get right down to it. Two days ago, you called Investigation HQ and said, I know who killed Shoko Nadami. That's right. Who? Hey, don't be so hasty. We haven't agreed on a deal. You're gonna let me out of prison, right? It's done. You've got a deal. All right. But to explain it properly, I need to tell you a story. It might take some time. Is that all right with you? I've got nothing but time. Then let's get started. The story of a lonely assassin. Once upon a time, there was a detective full of righteous justice. Let's call him F. F found the evils of the world intolerable. F had no parents, no siblings, and grew up in an orphanage since he was born. He suffered every kind of abuse imaginable there. It led him to despise all the evils of the world. One day, F was chasing a thug down at the harbor. Someone wanted for the assault and murder of women. Okay, I get it. I'll just throw down my knife. Here. And you lower your gun. It's fine. I got nothing else on me. I'll go quietly. You know, I have a history with hospitals. I've been going to a special hospital for a while. Even if I get caught, it's all good. I'll come right back out again. What should I do next time? Just thinking about it gets me excited. The culprit was unarmed, but F never served a day in prison. The case went to trial for some time, but it was determined to be self-defense, and he was declared innocent. If the truth got out, it would be a huge scandal for the police. People at the upper level were terrified of what might happen, so they had evidence fabricated. F wasn't suspended or disciplined at all. After a while, Returned to his job like nothing happened. That was a turning point for him. He was ready to shed the morality that was weighing him down, holding him back. F still wanted justice, and he was willing to dispense it to the immoral one by one. 
He became an assassin. A lone gunman. No agent, no employer. He was his own man. F believed that he was judge, jury, and executioner. But it didn't last long. One day, F got rid of a criminal we'll call X. X was responsible for defrauding and killing an innocent old man for his life insurance policy. Turns out, X had connections. Someone wasn't happy that he died. Rohan Kumakura, chairman of the Kumakuras. X was a top executive of the Kumakuras at the time. Rohan ordered his men to find and kidnap F. I've done some research. I know you've cleaned up at least 18 pieces of scum from this earth. But somehow there hasn't been a single criminal investigation. They're all treated as suicides, accidents, or natural causes. Amazing work. I'm impressed. How about you work for us? Of course, you have the right to say no. But it'll be the last word out of your mouth. F was trapped. Even if he somehow survived, he would be looking over his shoulder for the rest of his life. He had no choice but to take Rohan's offer. Thus, F's self-employment came to an end. He became a hired gun of the Kumakuras. Rohan even gave him a code name, Falco. Named for the falcon, a bird of prey. Falco didn't quit his job as a police officer, though. He worked as a detective by day, assassin by night at the will of the organization. An ordinary killer would need motive to take a life, not Falco. He did as he was told, one target after another. It didn't take long to destroy his heart completely. Time passed, and a few years back, Falco who by this time was exhausted in body and spirit, made a fatal mistake. He missed his mark and ended up taking a bullet to the stomach. Somehow, he managed to escape. After reaching a nearby shrine, his legs finally gave out under him. He had no strength left. He put his back up against the shrine and let out a moaning breath that he thought might be his last. But at that moment, In his darkening vision, he saw a woman approach him. He watched her take out her phone and dial for help. At the same time, he heard footsteps. Footsteps of at least two people closing in. He knew immediately that they were after him. He sprung into action, grabbing the woman and pulling her close, kissing her to keep her from talking. That was the first encounter between Falco and the woman. She was a teacher at some school. It was like she was from a totally different world than him. Listening to her talk, he would forget everything about his line of work. She was his only contact with the ordinary, mundane world. They met in secret a few more times, and Falco felt his heart grow warmer. Her smile and kindness were like a cold glass of water for Falco's parched heart. Falco started to become himself again, his former self. He swore on his life that from then on, he would live for her. So, you want to go clean? Fine. Do as you please. You've done a lot for us. 
But there is one last thing. One final job I want you to do for me. It's nothing major. This woman and her daughter. I need you to dispose of them. Should be simple, no? Rohan handed Falco a picture of a woman and a girl. It was the teacher Falco met at the shrine. And her daughter. She had just turned 12. Why the two of them? Rohan, as usual, never gave a reason. And Falco had no intention of carrying out the kill. But if he didn't, he knew that someone else would. He thought long and hard. How is he going to keep them safe and get out of the life of crime? He couldn't find an answer, no matter how hard he thought. He was backed into a corner. So, he decided to call on an old friend for help. And then... Why did you stop? Was that the whole story? You mentioned a detective. What's the connection between that and Shoko? Hey, answer me. This is a transaction, remember? Until I get a guarantee that you'll uphold your end of the bargain, I'm not telling you anything else. I'll give you half up front, half later. <laughs> if you want to hear the rest of my story, you better start the release procedures. Once they've cleared, I'll tell you everything. Date, it is unlikely that number 89 will uphold his promise, even upon release. Pewter. Yes? Start the preparations. For what? What do you think? <coughs> the sink. I have injected number 89 with the usual dosage. He will not be waking up anytime soon. Are you ready, Agent Date? Yeah. The time limit is six minutes. I know. Then let's begin. Not sup. Why are you sleeping on the job? Because I want to, obviously. Why are you getting mad at me? Yeah, this rug feels so good on my skin, yeah. Why are you suddenly a cat? Playtime's over. Let's begin. And stand up. Is this the Sagan residence? It definitely is. But why? Number 89. What were you up to? The green? I do not think I can pass through it. Really wants to hide it, huh? Okay, new plan. Somnium scan! Activate!
This appears to correspond to the green thing. A switch. But there are thorns around it. A picture. Just a picture. I don't have a pen. No choice. I must use my blood. You don't have to go that far. Hmm. The color has returned. Hey, Iba? I said blood, but it is not the same as human blood. No need to worry. And besides, we are in a dream. Still, blood? I'd feel better if you used a different word. For example? Body fluids? I do not feel comfortable with that. A phone. Should I pick it up? Find anything? Well, oh, there is something. A cork. What is this substance? Green tea? It's obviously not green tea. Perhaps it's jelly. It's not jelly. Agent Date, you've got five minutes. It's a ceiling fan. Is that like a giant desk fan? A desk fan only moves the air immediately around it. Where? Oh, right. Uncover number. It might. It's ringing again. Curious, but what if they threaten me for money? You're a police officer. Have some backbone. I suppose we didn't do anything wrong. At least you didn't faint. It's a pot. 
Steam is rising from it. It appears to be some kind of green curry. Maybe a soybean stew? It might also be boiled green juice. Yeah, like a slime. A turtle ninja could leap out at any moment. What? I told you to wear it. Wear it? All right, here I go. Okay. I am fine, actually. In fact, I feel as though my defense has risen. I'm a little worried about your head. Why? My head is thoroughly protected. Agent Date. About four minutes. A book. Ha! I wonder what these books symbolize. I don't know. Maybe he used to oversee a library? Number 89. A librarian. A book. A book. Here I go. What happened? Nothing. It's a ceiling thing. Switch. This switch again. Last time we handled it in a different manner. That was then. This but there are thorns. You are aware that I am the one who feels the pain. It's fine. It'll only hurt for a bit, then it'll be better. Huh. Oh, it doesn't hurt. The light has turned on. What is that? It's an eye. Date, what are we going to do? Leave it to me. With a target that large, this will be easy. Really beat the shit out of that glass. Now I know how birds feel. Lemon? Lemon, lemon. Where are you, lemon? You usually get a lemon with an order of karage, right? No lemon! Before we think about squeezing some on there, shouldn't we take a bite first? Oh, if only I had a lemon! If only I had a lemon! Ah! I passed out. Oh, we also could have ordered a lemon sour. That would have worked. Why wouldn't I order something else entirely? Oh, that works too. Piercing stare. Yeah, it is. Ah! Uh, I passed 
freaked out when it looked at me. Date, there's- Shit, this isn't good. 